Hey, my friends. Got a quick one for you here. We're going to talk about the shear stress strain diagram. This is kind of the last thing that's in uh, chapter three. And there it is, right? Now, let me tell you what this means, okay? So, what we've had so far, we had our other diagram that we had was just, um, let's see, this was epsilon and this was sigma. Right? That was, what was this diagram? This was the stress strain diagram. So just like in this diagram here, we were comparing the stress on an element to the strain in that element. And if you remember, strain was deflection. Right? Here's my slinky. If I have my arrow, as I start pulling on that, it elongates in inches per inch, that strain, okay? So how much force am I putting on that and how much strain is it causing? So along those lines, we're gonna talk about these two things over here. We're gonna talk about how um, shear stress is related to shear strain. Now let's go over this one more time, okay? Remember we talked about this, here's my slinky. And you see my little angle theta on here, right? That's a 90 degree angle. But as I push on the bottom this way and the top that way, I'm generating shear. Remember shear is when I have two forces opposing that are trying to tear something, okay? So if I push that like that, pushing on the top and pulling on the bottom, well, let me do it on the right angle there, it deforms that. And remember that's shear strain is that deformation. And remember, shear strain is given by gamma and it's pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, minus the angle, theta, right? Theta is now smaller. So gamma is the difference between 90 degrees and this new theta here, okay? So as I put a shear stress in the material, right? If I push on it in a shearing fashion, these layers are sliding across each other, shearing. I am inducing shear strain. So the more shear I put in, the more strain I get out, okay? So this graph is pretty similar to this. It just doesn't have this yielding section in it like the other graph did, okay? But all the rest of it is pretty much the same, okay? Let me erase that, okay? So what do we have on this diagram here? Now I put some, here's all our things that we've talked about that relate to this graph. We talk about shear stress, that's just V over A or P over A, right? Um, and then I've got Poisson's ratio. Remember, Poisson is given by the letter, Greek letter nu. It's uh, negative strain latitude divided by strain longitude, okay? And there, we've talked about that in the last video. And then there's shear strain, which is 90 degrees minus the new angle theta, right? So shear strain is an angle. It's in, this one is in radians. What is, what is tau in? What is that in? Well, that's PSI or megapascals. So since this doesn't have any units, it's just in radians, the units for um, this graph uh, for tau are all in um, megapascals or, P, or KSI, okay? So let's think about this, all right? Now notice this graph still has a straight section there, okay? What does that mean? Well, just like in the other graph, that means that if I put a shear stress on this, when I let go of it, it goes back to where it was, right? So this is the elastic region for that shearing action. If I shear it, it goes back when I, get, when I let the force off of it. Now, if I shear it too much, what's gonna happen? Now I'm up here, when I let go of it, your slinky's deformed forever, right? It doesn't go back to where it started from, okay? So you have tau plastic, right? So that's the edge of the plastic region. Anything beyond that, you're plastic, which means it's deforming. Okay, so anything in here is elastic. Anything over here is plastic. So this is the limit for tau. This is the limit for gamma. In other words, how far that thing can deform before it doesn't come back. Okay, and then just like on the other graph up here at the top, you have an ultimate stress. So this is the ultimate shear stress. And this is the ultimate gamma. That's the most it can take before it breaks, okay? And then this over here, what is the F for? Fracture, right? I'm gonna shear it so hard that I'm gonna fracture the material at that point. 
Okay, so one of the things that we can do, just like we did on the other graph, is in this region right here. Now, the other graph, we had E, right? Do you remember E? The modulus of elasticity was equal to rise over run. Remember on our other graph we just had up here, rise was stress, and the run was epsilon for strain, right? Well, on this graph, the same thing. We're going to have something called G. And G is the shear modulus of elasticity, okay? Which tells me kind of how a material can take shear strain and let go, how, how easily it can take it, right? And that, that's according to that slope, right? So it tells me about how much shear force or shear stress I can put in it and how much it's going to deform. So the shear modulus of elasticity is calculated just like that guy. It's rise over run, okay? It's the slope of the line. So G, that shear modulus, is equal to rise, which is tau, divided by the run, which is gamma, okay? So that's the equation that you can derive from the, the um, what do you call it? Um, this diagram, the shear stress strain diagram. I'm sorry, I went to sleep there for a second. There's one more equation that I want to tell you about that's in this chapter that you get here. It's actually derived later, it's actually derived in chapter 10. But the other thing is, is that I, as things start to shear, Poisson's ratio is, which is, remember Poisson's ratio, the marshmallow rule, if I squeeze it this way, it grows that way, right? Um, it's also related to G, the shear modulus elasticity. So G, which, and, the, and G is a look -em up value. I can look that up in the material property table in the back of my book. So this is something we're going to be given sometimes in some of the equations, and you need to, you know, know these equations to know how to use it, okay? But G is equal to, I'm looking at my book because I don't remember this equation off the top of my head, E, which is the modulus of elasticity, divided by 2 times 1 plus Poisson's ratio, okay? So this equation here, also very handy. So in the future, um, we'll be working some problems and they'll be giving us the shear modulus of elasticity. Now, this Poisson's ratio is a look them up for, for a, uh, uh, different materials. So these are handy equations to have. So that's two more equations that we can put in our, um, in our toolbox, right? So do you understand what shear stress and strain and how they're related is, right? As one pushes on there, it, it deforms that body and how easy it can deform it, okay? So that's, uh, that's the last thing in chapter three. Next chapter, chapter four.